Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about caring for somebody with incontinence. I think this is such an important topic because incontinence is a really common issue, and I really want to support both the caregiver and the individual living with incontinence in this video. So there's going to be a lot of information and some really great practical tips and tricks, so make sure you stick around. At the very end, I'm going to show one of my favorite tricks for how to get a pull-up style incontinence brief on without having to take off your pants and shoes. So make sure you stick around for that because that's a pretty good one. I want to thank Because Market for sponsoring this video. Because Market is a fantastic company that provides best-in-class products with high levels of absorbency and reliability. They are irritation-free. They are dermatologist-approved, latex-free. Just a fantastic, reliable incontinence product. Uh, they offer discreet delivery so that you can have items shipped directly to your home. And my favorite feature is they have a subscription service, and this can take a lot of the burden away from a caregiver having to remember to reorder products so you never run out. And the awesome thing about the subscription service is not only does it take away from the brain burden, but it also takes away from the financial burden in saving you 10% overall. And an additional savings, if you go down below in my description and click on the link for Because Market, any purchase you make, if you input the code EQUIPMEOT at checkout, you get an additional 20% off. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Okay, so I want to start off by talking about what is incontinence and what are the types, because it's really important to know what you're dealing with to know how to approach it and treat it. Um, many types of incontinence have medical treatments available, and it's so important that you're communicating with your primary care physician or specialist in regards to any changes you might observe in incontinence, things like increased volume or frequency of incontinence issues, odor or color changes. These are all really important things to note because they can be indication of more severe issues like urinary tract infections, bladder infections, or changes in nerve conduction. So these are all things that you want to make sure you're communicating regularly. Um, so let's start with the different types. The first and most common type is stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is usually due to um, weakening of the pelvic floor, and it can be also caused by any sort of trauma to the abdomen. So this is common in women, especially um, during uh, pregnancy or after labor and delivery and after menopause. So this occurs when you have um, a stressful situation on the abdomen, things like laughter and coughing and sneezing and even jumping or heavily jostling activities like jogging can cause urinary leakage. This does have treatments available, things like pelvic floor therapy, injections, some surgeries and medications, and even diet changes can make an improvement in this type of incontinence. The next is going to be urge incontinence. Urge incontinence causes sudden spasmatic urges from the bladder causing full or partial release of the bladder contents. This can be very frustrating and is often associated with neurological conditions like spinal cord injuries, strokes, um, dementia, some forms of Parkinson's disease. So this is another one that it's super important you're communicating with your physician around because there are, again, treatments that they could use and interventions. The next one is going to be overflow incontinence. Overflow incontinence is a really important one to identify because it's often associated with an incomplete emptying of the bladder. So what happens is the person has the urge to go to the bathroom. They do not empty the bladder all the way, so the bladder continues to fill. It overfills and you end up with leakage and they don't really feel like they had to go in that moment. So it's a really frustrating one. And if you're not emptying the bladder all the way, that is when you have a very high risk of developing things like bladder infections and urinary tract infections. So it's really important that this one be identified and treated. The last one, another very common form of incontinence is called functional incontinence. Functional incontinence is associated with physical, cognitive, or environmental issues that make it difficult for somebody to access the appropriate facilities to use the bathroom. So this one is one that's near and dear to my heart as somebody who specializes in adaptation and modification to maximize accessibility. So I have some really practical suggestions that I'll mention in a little bit about how you can manage functional incontinence in particular. There is also um, a common issue of mixed incontinence where you have some of, some of multiple types of incontinence kind of working together to create a specific situation. So again, it's really important that you have somebody involved, like a physician or specialist, who can help manage these things. Okay, so let's talk about the first line of defense when we're talking incontinence, and that is wearable incontinence products. These products are going to range in how much absorbency they offer. They're also going to range in the type of person who is appropriate to use them. So I'm going to pull out a couple different types here, one being pads, okay? So pads are going to be worn in a pair of underwear 
to absorb usually smaller amounts of liquid. And these are more commonly used in situations where you have bladder leaks, or maybe you're getting to the bathroom, but you're having slight amounts of leaking on your way to the bathroom. These are going to be um, really comfortable and discreet for individuals to wear within their comfortable underwear. They come, um, th these ones by Because Market actually can hold up to three cups. These are their overnight pads. So they're gonna hold more, but they can range quite a bit. So once you've moved on from pads, so if you have a higher amount of uh, incontinence occurring or you want something that's all included, you don't like the pad in the underwear, you want something separate, that's when you move up to the pull-up style brief. This is probably the most popular type. I will say for individuals who are going to use this, you wanna make sure that they're somewhat involved in their bathroom care, okay? I want this for somebody who can stand um, who can maybe ambulate short distances, maybe is trying to be continent, is able to get to the bathroom, but has some leaks along the way, or maybe may have a full incontinent episode. These are going to be very, very useful in those situations. They wear a lot like underwear, and they're um, fairly comfortable and, and more discreet than the third option, which is the tab style. So here's a picture here of the tab style brief, which these are going to be mostly used in situations where the person is bed bound, or wheelchair bound and not particularly involved with their own care, as these are not something that are particularly easy for an individual to um, don and doff independently versus the pull-up style brief. So some important considerations. How do you pick which one you need? How do you size it appropriately? This is so important. And I wanna point out um, down below, I'll put a link to the Because Market website has a fantastic quiz that helps you to understand how to pick the right products. So there's nothing more frustrating then getting the product home, putting it on, and having it leak, having it fit on inappropriately, having it irritate the skin, all these things can be prevented with a little upfront planning and save you money, time, and frustration. You also wanna make sure you're always keeping in mind skin. So finding a product that's irritant-free, doesn't have things like latex or chemicals. Um, I try to avoid ones that have a high um, like f scent added to them. Those scents oftentimes can be associated with um, rashing if you have sensitive skin. You also want to make sure that the product you're using is soft to the touch because this is going to go directly on the skin and I particularly like to look at the seaming along the legs. Um, it's hard to see here but if you feel the seaming along the legs and it's rough to the touch that's the number one place I start to see skin breakdown on people who wear this type of brief consistently. The Because Market ones are extremely soft and they have a good amount of stretch all the way around, but still fit snug on the person so they're less likely to have it slide around, rub, and potentially leak. You also wanna make sure that the absorbent component leaches the moisture away from the skin and then is also breathable so you don't end up with a humid, damp environment because that is a perfect place for bacteria, for odor, and then for rashes and potential skin breakdown. I also like to use something like um, a odorless wipe system, um, or even a bidet, water bidet, these types of things to help really cleanse the skin in between um, applying a new brief because you want it to be perfectly clean before you go to put a new one on. You can also use barrier creams. Um, these will help to reduce irritation, rubbing, and potential rashes. So all that goes into consideration. Another thing I wanna mention, and this isn't always talked about, is how to dispose of these briefs, okay? So you can buy these disposal bags. These, are, these actually come from Because Market as well. They're designed to hold the, the volume you need. So you can see it's a, it's a larger bag. So if you were using pads, you could fit multiple pads in here or one full brief, maybe two. And the nice thing about these is they're designed to be concealable. They're opaque, so you can't see what's inside of them. They're gonna hold the odor back. So you can throw these in your regular trash can in the house and not have that odor linger. Um, that's super helpful for caregivers who are having to do this multiple times a day. You don't wanna have to run out and put it in the outside trash can. This will save you some effort. This is also great if you're going out for a community outing, visiting somebody else's home, and you want a discreet way to dispose of a soiled brief. So I recommend getting some sort of disposal system that you're comfortable with to kind of take down some of that extra effort. Okay. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about environmental changes. And again, this is something I'm very, very passionate about and have done quite a few videos here about things you could do. So I'll mention some of my favorites here. One of the things you want to make sure is the person can locate the bathroom. 
If you're in a new place, like a new facility, or the individual has moved in with you recently, making sure that the bathroom is easy to identify. So having a sign, whether that's a physical sign on the door, something tactile, if the individual maybe has low vision, I think it's so important to add a lighted pathway using LED lights along the hallway to help people identify the bathroom at night, which is a common time to see incontinence issues. So having a light, having a sign, making that door really, really easy to identify can be a huge help in making sure people get there on time. Some other things you can do is actually make the doorway itself better. I'm gonna post a link here to my video about how to install swing clear hinges, which can widen a doorway by up to two inches and offer somebody the ability to enter and exit a bathroom with greater ease. So they're not struggling to get through the door and during that struggle, having an incontinent episode. Now they can access the bathroom with their walker with greater ease. Other things you can do is reduce the fear of falling. Falling in the bathroom is a huge issue. And for some people who've experienced it, it's something they never wanna do again and they may avoid the bathroom altogether. So having a safe environment, removing throw rugs from the floor so there's no trip hazards, making sure the lighting is really good, adding things like raised toilet seats, having safety frames on the toilet, grab bars on the wall, all these things can make the experience of using the bathroom more comfortable and safe which can reduce that incontinence risk as well. And the last option is having a portable commode. So if the individual is really physically limited but could potentially get to the bathroom if it was closer, having a good commode is a great option. I'm gonna post a link here of a video I did about padded drop arm commodes, which are a great updated option for greater comfort and stability for individuals who are using a commode versus going to the bathroom, um, whether that's at night or all the time. So those are some ways you can make the environment safer. Um, now I'm going to show you, as you've all stuck around through all that information, my awesome trick on how to get one of these pull-up briefs on without taking off your pants and shoes. All right, so let's show you how to get one of these on without having to fully remove your pants and shoes, which can be a huge pain. So I'm gonna start by pulling down the pants and you're gonna wanna pull them down all the way to the floor. Just let them go all the way down. Then we're gonna come up here and most briefs like this come with a really nice, easy to rip side. So you just rip the sides just like this and take them off this way, dispose of them, boom. Okay, now you're gonna have the individual sit back down if you're helping them or if this is you're doing it yourself. You're going to find the leg holes and the waist and you're gonna kinda of open it up a little bit. Make sure you're careful not to rip those sides because nothing is more frustrating than tearing the side when you're trying to do this. But make sure you pull the sides open so they're nice and open. Then what you're gonna do is take your hand and grip it right at that seam, okay? And what you're gonna do then is, if you're doing this on yourself, it's gonna look a little different. And don't mind me, I have a broken foot, so I'm in my fancy orthotic boot just to show you it'll work with even that. So we're gonna go down to the floor. I'm gonna lift my foot up a little bit here and you're going to feed it through the pant leg, okay? And then you're going to loop it around, again, being careful not to rip. This is a big boot, so I'm asking a lot of the stretch on this thing. You're gonna slowly work it over the heel, and then it will pull up, kind of adjust it, make sure it's facing the right way. And then I'm gonna do it with the other side. So again, kind of open that pant leg up again. This works best. If the pants have a little stretch, a little uh, little decent size opening, they don't. this doesn't work awesome with a pair of leggings, but I'm sure it could be done if they have enough stretch. Just like that, your brief is on. Yep, and you didn't have to take off your shoes and your pants. Now we're gonna stand up, pull it into place, and pull your pants back up over top. And off you go. So there you have it, a whole bunch of information on how to care for somebody with incontinence. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, consider giving me a thumbs up. And always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.